now that I have a sword and I have some throwing knives, all I need is some luck picks for my row. Luck picks are an essential tool when, when it comes to RPG, because they have always been a part of the rogue's backpack. However, maybe it's just me, but I rarely see luck picks in LARP. And that's a shame, because having a tool really helps the atmosphere. And at least to me, yeah, it helped me get into character a lot easier. Also, just just think about it. If you get if you get thrown into jail and your luck picks get are getting confiscated by the guards, that then how are you gonna get out? Just just that small type of fear, it really helps the roleplay get along and, and really helps the roleplay. Not to mention you look less like an idiot because you're, you're not actually working with nothingness. Hey, I'm picking luck here. Back off! Okay, okay, fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, well. Last year, I managed to make these in a hurry. They're made out of duct tape and cardboard I cut out. And they're great because they were cheap and easy, but this year I want something a little more smooth, a little nicer, and also these are kind of falling apart. So. So, I made my lockpicks out of some hard plastic I used from, I found from an old ice cream container. I stole from some old lady somewhere. Nah, I didn't. And then, well, you're gonna need some liquid latex, or I used liquid latex. Then some acrylic paint, again the colors are black, white, it's grey, silver and little green. And to finish it, of course, some talcum powder. Other tools you might want to have is a sharp scissor and a pen and some pencils. But I'm assuming you already have that, so let's move on. So the first thing I did was to mark up on the plastic where I wanted my lock picks to be. I used the old lock picks from last year as tin plates, you know, the ones I made out of cardboard and duct tape. And then I just marked on on the plastic with the pen and scratched with the scissor and cut it out. And then I sort of got these the, what are called the rectangular shapes that I then sort of just used the scissor to cut in and make the lock picks the way I wanted them. And I had more than one design. I used, um, let's see, I had three designs. One because I wanted it, one where I had one single layer of plastic and then one where I had two layers of plastic and then the one where I didn't use latex. Now why is that, you ask? Well, I'm glad you asked, because I will tell you. Well, latex on plastic, that's not really a good idea, because the latex is gonna be peeling off really easy. So one layer of lat latex on one layer of plastic, it's not gonna be very good unless the layer is very evenly done all around the plastic. And the plastic doesn't have, or if the plastic has some kind of scratches in the surface, then the latex will stick better. If you have two layers of plastic, these two layers will support each other. If, well, at least that's the idea. If you put latex on both sides and then build it up, sort of like a sword, only with two layers, you get bigger plastic. You get a what you call more robust build, so to speak, more robust lockpick. But that also means you need to make two identical pieces of plastic, which can be a pain. And then the last thing, not using latex and only using the acrylic paint on plastic. That actually is the, I found out that's actually the easiest one to do. But it's also the one that doesn't really, I don't know, it doesn't give me the right, doesn't give the right feel to it. What you see in the end. Now 
now that I have all of them cut out, it's time to mix the latex and the paint. Now I'm not really gonna go into this very much because we have looked at it so many times. It's a basic gray metal color. The only difference here is here the paint is the key ingredient. The latex sort of get, uh, sort of helping create this coat around it. And uh, but the paint the paint is the thing that's supposed to really make it solid because the latex that can break around uh, that can break around plastic. So just remember to put a lot of paint into it, and you don't need that much la much latex either. I mean, the thing I put on here, well, that's actually more than, wow, oh, I need a little more than that, but it's pretty much. Oh, and remember one thing, thin layers. For this, it's really important that you give it thin layers, thin layers of latex. It creates the best and even coat. Here it's best to get a really even coat all around. You need to cover the whole thing. If you have one tiny hole one anywhere on it, it's gonna break. So keep that in mind. It's really, really freaking important. Oh yeah, and the thing I didn't mention was Maybe you want to buy some plastic gloves because you're working with some really small things and when you're working with latex and some small and these really small things that you have to hold in your hand when you paint it, then plastic gloves in a, is a really good idea or some rubber gloves. Just remember, don't get latex gloves. If you use latex gloves, it don't make any sense to protect your hands to protect your hands against the latex. Just in general, it's a really just in case it's a really good idea just to use plastic gloves. These here I use. That's the cheapest ones you can get actually, and they do the trick fine. Although I have to change them a lot because uh, the latex really dry, uh, dry really quickly on them. But, but they do the job, and that's important. Now here I only paint one side at a time, so uh, and that works fine for me, I guess. But if you have the opportunity to hang them up somewhere, it would really benefit if you could uh, sort of dip them into the latex or into the paint. Dip them into latex. If it's paint you're using, you have to paint both sides and then hang them up some um, on something. I actually made a small hanger on them, but I didn't have something to hang them in. So just something to keep in mind. Is the waiting game for it to dry. Luckily this dries pretty quickly. So the legs layer can come on again. I actually made mine next to my small uh, throwing knives so I could just mix a big pile of latex and paint. So that was really that that speeded things up a bit for me because otherwise sitting here with a small amount of latex and small amount of paint and everything that can take a long time. So do the things together. Now, while I made this, I actually got the idea that I wanted to make a little trap, you know. So, I made a little needle out of the plastic. Well, not a sharp needle, just a, you know, fake needle. And I made it just like the others. I painted this one with the paint only because the, acrylic, the latex wouldn't bind to it. And then I took some latex and some green paint and put it on the tip, sort of dipped it into the latex. So it looked it ended up looking like this. It would be a poisoning poison poisonous needle, you know. Very dangerous to put inside a small chest or something next to the door. Really bungee. Bungee. Bung when they were all done, I just put them in the container and then put talcum powder on them. Now because they have all these shapes and everything, putting talcum powder separately would be a pain, so just mix it all up together. Much easier. Yeah, 
just shake the talc about it, just shake a little round. Do, 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 do. Now, of course, the ones that you didn't put latex on don't need to have talcum powder put on them. Go figures. But they shouldn't take any damage from it if you do. I put all mine in the same container and then talcum powder all around. Yeah, I was lazy. And here we have them. At the end, I just decorate one there with some small string. This is one of the doubled ones. Here we have some of the single ones. The single ones actually turned out greater than double ones. Mainly because the double ones didn't actually fit that well together. And the one with paint, well they needed a lot of paint. Let me just say that. A lot of paint. And it didn't have the right feeling to it, you know. So if you're gonna make lockpicks and not want to go for the traditional metal wire, or metal thing anyway, I want to go plastic, then latex and a single layer of plastic, or two layers of plastic and latex. Actually two layers gives the most robust build, as I already mentioned, but one layer, yeah it's a bit easier, but you also get something that's a little more floppy like, so yeah. I have a mixture here, so... And I like, I actually like the mixture, so it gives the feeling that you have something to choose between. And I definitely gotta have them with me for Metrodea, so I'm really looking forward to that. So now that I have these, then maybe, just maybe, I can start getting out of here. So let's see.